Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. I'm a former Royal Marines Commando from the United Kingdom and today we're going to be talking about America's AC-130 gunship. Now, this is a, a gunship that is on steroids, basically, uh, for, for want of a better phrase. It's a fantastic bit of kit and it's a one that's caused, um, you know, many successful missions around the globe for America over the years and it's, um, yeah, we're going to get into this one, guys. We're going to break it down a little bit and um, we're going to start reviewing certain elements of this uh, gunship and talk about it from uh, my experience as being a former Royal Marine and uh, try to translate it for you guys into um, into a language that you'd understand because the UK, the US, although we are um, quite different, there's a few similarities that you might not notice, okay? But um, yeah, going to get into this one, guys. Before we do, smash the like button, subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. And um, before we get into it, I just want to say a quick 30 seconds on something. If you want to skip 30 seconds to enter the video, then please do so. But I'm on a mission to get a YouTube talent manager. That talent manager I've been in contact with has said I need 40 to 70,000 views per video for the next three or four weeks. And then I get in contact with him again, hopefully with those numbers numbers and uh, they'll probably take me on that's no cap either i'm not lying in, in literally three weeks time you'll be able to revert back to these videos and see if i'm telling the truth because it's um it's it's true guys i'm not going to let you know too much about it until we've hit those numbers if i meet those numbers hopefully you'll see me on a youtube boxing stage very very soon that's the main reason but support the channel share the content let's get into it Jesus, the firepower from these things is phenomenal. You do not want to be the person or the group of people in vehicles. It doesn't matter in buildings on the ground when this thing's letting rip. You're probably just going to be gone from this planet anyway before you've even heard the sound, guys. Accurate, devastating, dangerous. This is America's lethal AC-130 gunship on steroids. By the way original video channel uh, in the link in the description. Go support them guys, fantastic channel. The historic lethal and combat tested AC-130 gunship known for attacking... I Shout out to Sam Wilson, the creator. It looks like he's an ex-military guy as well. Looks stacked, jacked, and ready to fight, man. ISIS and Taliban fighters during close air support high-risk combat missions is getting a massive technological upgrade with newer weapons and avionics to increase the effectiveness of the attack platform and extend its service life into future decades. Right, so this thing is, um, this video is about two years old, one years old. Now, the SC-130 is going to be around for a long time yet with all of these upgrades and stuff, especially the way America does things. They like to provision 10, 20, 30 years into the future. That's why the contracts for these things are massive, all right? They're massive, the longevity out of them. They want as much as they can out of these gunships but they work, and they work very, very well and effectively on the battlefield. That's why we wanted to see these things upgraded, because, you know, the basic structure of this AC-130 works well anyway without the upgrades. So if you can upgrade, provision for the future, um, the way war changes and all of that type of stuff, if you, as long as you can um, provision for that, this gunship will be around for another 20, 30 years, I believe. Might be wrong, but, you know, any anyone who's in this industry, let me know in the comments. Service official set. AC-130 gunship work involves upgrading the plane with weapons, targeting systems, and sensor packages, Colonel Robert Toth, Chief of Tactical Aircraft, Special Operations, and Combat Search and Rescue Division, told Scout Warrior in an interview. Early variants of the AC-130 gunship first entered combat in the late 1960s, Whoa, 1960s. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was late 70s. I didn't realize early variants of this were as, um, as early as the 1960s. That's phenomenal, considering World War II happened, you know, 20 years prior to that, 20 odd years prior, depending on how late into the 60s we're talking. <laughs> it just goes to show how advanced this kit is, okay, guys? I'm not going to mention alien technology, but you know where I'm coming from. During the Vietnam War, later variants served in the Gulf War, War on Terror, and War in Afghanistan, yeah, among buddy. other missions. The gunships operated by both the Air Force and Special Operations Command are often used to support Special Operations fighters on the ground engaged in combat. 
The aircraft is known for its 105mm side-firing cannons, which enable it to fire from a side-axis position during close-in combat supporting ground troops. Right, so those of you that don't realize, it's basically a tank flying in the sky from above. Um, <laughs> more powerful than a tank because it's got multiple turrets, all right, and multiple guns. This thing's devastating, man. If the devil created a weapon system, the devil would create the AC-130. The AC-130 gunship also has a 25mm Gatling gun and a 40mm weapon, according to Air Force statements. The Lockheed Boeing built aircraft uses four Allison T-56 A-15 turboprop engines, each with 4,300 shaft horsepower. The 155,000-pound aircraft has a 132-foot wingspan and hits speeds of 300 miles per hour. Wow, that's really impressive considering how big it is and its main objective is literally to destroy whatever it needs to destroy. The fact that it can do 300 plus miles per hour in the sky with all of that weight load, um, or payload rather, is is really impressive, guys, okay? That's a, that's a phenomenal bit of kit. Its crew consists of a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, fire control officer, electronic warfare officers, flight engineer, TV operator, infrared detection operator, loadmaster, and four aerial gunners. Basically, a full squad of individuals ready to, you know, tear shit up. Um, I'm glad he mentioned pilot, though, because it would be a bit worrying if this thing didn't have a pilot. The AC-130... British humor, guys. Come on, get some lols in the chat. Spooky 2 gunship is a standard C-130 transport aircraft engineered for close air support combat. Its 105mm gun, called an M102 howitzer, fires 33-pound high-explosive shells at a firing rate of 10 rounds a minute, according to a report in Popular Mechanics. The weapon has a range of up to 7 miles and is the largest gun ever operated from a U.S. Air Force aircraft, the report said. Guys, that's phenomenal. You know, it's it's going to be devastating. This thing's just going to be, you know, swirling around a position, dropping those things. I mean, I do believe I might be wrong, but that's quite literally a tank in this in the sky. All right, that, that correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Any artillery guys, any tank crew members, or anything in the chat, let me know because I'm pretty sure that's like basically a tank in the sky. The aircraft's 25mm Gatling gun, the GAU-12, is the same weapon now on the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. The weapon fires both high-explosive incendiary and armor-piercing incendiary rounds against enemy fighters, buildings, and light vehicles, Popular Mechanics writes. C-130 Fleet Man, how many C-130s? Two, three, four, five, there's got to be about 30, 40 of those things there. The AC-130 gunships make up a small portion of a fleet of roughly 500 C-130 planes throughout the Air Force and Special Operations Command, Toth explained. Insane. The cargo planes are used to airdrop supplies, equipment, weapons, and troops in forward-deployed locations. Airborne. As a propeller-driven aircraft, the C-130s can fly and land in more rugged conditions and withstand harsh weather such as obscurance. The propellers make the aircraft's engines less susceptible to debris flying and causing operational problems for the engines. So, in general, a very robust bit of kit. Normally what you find with these um, very dangerous bits of kit, especially um, from the modern militaries, is the temperamental. The, the, these things can break very easy, okay? The things that can cause the most damage are normally the things that break down first. This is a phenomenal bit of kit. AC-130 is something that can not only cause devastation where it needs to, it's a reliable bit of kit, it seems, all right? If you want it to go somewhere, it's going to go there, relatively good order, and come back in relative good order as well, having done the job that it needs to be. There's, that's what makes it special for me, and that's the very reason I believe that the AC-130 gunship or variants of in the future will be around for a long time to come, guys. It really allows you to do that tactical movement of equipment and personnel to take the airplane to the last tactical mile. A lot of our transport strategic airlifters are meant to go to a hard runway to a hard runway somewhere and then they turn over the cargo to be moved to the forward areas to a C-130 or a vehicle. The C-130 allows you to take that cargo and land on a smaller runway or unimproved airfield, Toth added. Impressive as hell. 
C-130s are used for domestic, international, and war zone transport, including homeland security, disaster relief, and supply deliveries, among other things. There are probably missions that have yet to be dreamed up for the C-130, Toth said. The fleet consists of 135 more modern C-130J aircraft and 165 older C-130Hs, which have been around since the 80s, Toth explained. Also, MC-130Js are specially modified airlifters engineered to transport Army Green Berets. Yeah, buddy, there they are, the Green Berets. I know they're different over there, but, you know, Green Berets are Green Berets nonetheless. This thing to me is worth worth more than gold, man. Okay, so respect to the Green Berets. A little bit of a backstory, guys, for you with the Green Berets. My first ever understanding of a green beret believe it or not came from and i'm not ashamed to say this it came from rambo first blood part one i realized he was a, a u.s green beret now i started doing a bit of research 20 years ago and then figured out that you know we have the uh, uh, guys called who, who wear green berets the royal marines and that's the reason why i wanted to join the royal marines a little bit of a uh, inside story there guys navy seals and army rangers they are essentially a C-130J further modified with defensive systems, with radar countermeasures and infrared radar and advanced sensors for specialized missions. They can also perform in-flight refueling, Toth explained. C-130 Modernization The Air Force remains vigilant about its C-130 fleet to ensure the airframes, wing boxes, avionics, and communication systems remain safe and operational. This is particularly true of the older 1980s-era C-130Hs, Toth added. The thing that causes the greatest risk to the airplane is the life of the wing. We monitor the wing of the aircraft, and as the wings get past their service, we bring the airplanes back in and bring in new structures with the primary focus being the center wing box, which is the area where the wings mount to the fuselage top. I know this is um, going back specifically to the 1980s versions of the SE-130Hs, but why is it that these things have, have a weak spot and they'll have to repair them every now and again? I know everything has a weak spot, but such a profound weak spot, i.e. the wing, that seems a little bit of a, um, a, a design fault for me. Now, if the new AC-130s haven't got that fault, why can't they just replace that wing with the same one? I don't know, maybe it would cost too much to do, and that seems like the obvious thing. But then again, I'm a Marine, not a, um, not a technician, not a, not a technical trade. I've said. As for when a C-130 requires a maintenance upgrade to preserve and maintain service life, the Air Force uses an assessment metric referred to as equivalent baseline hours. The wing boxes are changed once the aircraft reaches a certain severity factor in its operational service time. This is necessary because the wear and tear or impact of missions upon an airplane can vary greatly depending upon a range of factors such as the altitude at which a plane is flying, Toth said. Low level flight may be three to four times the severity factor of flying at a higher level, he said. Avionics Modernization Program Increment 1 involves adding new 8.33 radios to the aircraft to improve communication along with initiatives to upgrade cockpit voice recorders and digital data recorders. C-130s will also receive new collision avoidance technology designed to prevent the planes from hitting terrain or colliding with one another midair. AMP Inc. 2 I wonder how often something like that would happen though. Uh, it's a well-known, established fact in um, in in the Air Force world, you know, both civilian and military. That, generally speaking, the the military guys are a lot better trained um, than the civilian guys, simply for the fact that they do this day in day out, and the level of training that they have to go through, um, just to be tactically aware of their situation. Never mind flying the bloody thing. It's really, really hard and top notch, guys, and they get a lot of hours spent on them training, honing their skills. Um, I can't remember where I was going with that now, so we'll just get back to the video. It involves a larger scale effort to integrate digital avionics throughout the airplane. It oh yeah, that was it. So effectively, you know, worrying about them colliding with something is, you know, is it really going to be something that happens often? My guess is that the answer would be no. It's not going to happen that often indeed. Two will require nine months to one year of work to be completed by 2028, Toth explained. 
This will allow us to bring the airplane from analog to digital, integrate a glass cockpit, and use touchscreen displays. We'll get away from the old systems of avionics where we had dial-driven instrumentation to where it's all digital. This makes us able to process a lot more information, Toth said. As part of the new C-130 modernization calculus, the Air Force will consider retiring some C-130Hs and replace them with newly built C-130Js. The service has the authority to acquire an additional 20 C-130Js, Toth added. We continue to evaluate where it makes sense to retire an older airplane and instead put that money into buying new airplanes, he said. Yeah, I guess you've got to weigh up the balance of whether it's going to be cost effective or not. If it was the United Kingdom, I could see this being a bigger problem than it is in America. The fact that you guys have a humongous budget, um, I don't think you're going to be too bothered about throwing one of these planes away, saving the cost to refurbing it and just buying a new one in the first place. I'd imagine you guys would just go with the latter, just buy a new one, okay, and uh, recycle the rest of the other stuff from the old vehicles. You know, but a lot of countries don't have that privilege. I mean, I believe your budget is, is it, it's nearly a trillion dollars a year. I might be wrong, or 800 billion or something. I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of money, guys. Awesome bit of kit, man. Look at that. Awesome. Wow, that shot right there just gives you a better insight and understanding of just how big these vehicles are. Airborne vehicles, phenomenal bit of kit, man. It must be brilliant jumping out of the back of one of those things. Okay then, so I think that's just going to show us some footage of the thing um, flying and landing and stuff like that. You guys get it. What I'd like to know from you guys, if you could stick around for another couple of minutes, is especially those who've um, actually served in the United States Air Force uh, or the Army or Marine Corps, you know, you'll have been on one of these potentially. What it was like in your experience? Have you? What, I would like to hear stories from you guys, the good, the bad and the ugly. Have you ever experienced something dangerous whilst on one of these, especially those who served in Afghanistan? What was your experience when you were on an AC-130 gunship? Or even if it wasn't a gunship, if it was for you to jump out of the back of one of these things, you might have worked in logistics. Anything, guys. I want to hear your stories. If you can drop the comments below, let me know because I'm trying to respond to as many comments as I possibly can. So let's to create the discussion in the chat guys but if you like this type of content thank you for being here you all know the cause by now if you skipped the beginning part of the video my cause is to eventually become a youtube boxer i want to fight some of these young punks who's up and coming now and uh, get amongst it guys because i feel i've got something to offer there's one thing that separates me from the rest of them although i might not be as big on social media i know for a fact the veteran community from the globe will step up and watch me fight so we're not just talking about i'm from england people from england like me and you might get people from england watch me and tune in and pay for pay-per-view you you know you've got the fact that i'm, I'm a royal marines commando in the veteran community whether it's from america from france from the uk from germany it doesn't matter i know the veteran community will step up and watch me on those shows so i think i'm a bit of a unique selling point to any promotion and once they know that and understand that and i have got the views and i have got a talent manager and i can explain this to them i generally believe you will see not just a buzz around me, but you'll see other veteran YouTubers coming into the scene as well. So I think it's good for YouTube boxing. It's good for the community. It's also good for the veteran community. Okay, guys. So um, please help me get to that point. How you can do it is liking the video, commenting and watching as much as the video as you can and sharing it most importantly with far and wide. Share these videos on uh, um, in the discords. Share it on discussions and forums on Facebook. You, you can share these videos wherever you want and help me out, help raise awareness, guys. But if you've reached it this far, nearly 20 minutes in on my video, let me know in the chat because I like to gauge how many people actually watch these videos. But last thing, I want to say thank you for watching me. Thank you for supporting me. And for the members, guys, I really appreciate you guys. 
thank you. If you want to become a member, press the join button. But until next time, I will see you later, troops. Peace.